Hey there, all you beautiful Texans. Welcome back to the James Show. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Let's go. Happy Monday. Uh, let's just jump right into it because my first guest needs to explain herself. What we have is uh, one of our two assumed presidential candidates uh, has turned into a bit of a copycat. Now, that's it's one thing. If you copy yourself, I mean, that's almost expected. You're not going to have a whole new script for every stop on the road. It's good to be back in Wisconsin. (laughs) It is so good to be back in Michigan. Listen, let me tell you, I am clear. The path to the White House runs right through this state. And listen, I am clear. The path to the White House runs right through this state. I took on perpetrators of all kinds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you probably heard that before. Uh, But now it's a different story. When you're not copying yourself, it's a different story when you're copying your opponent. Because when I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips, people making tips. Eliminate taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. And I think the only people that are real happy about this are hospitality workers. Blonde Kamala back on the James Show. Explain yourself. Are you copying Trump? (laughs) <laughs> how absurd is that right oh, excuse me. i mean listen my ideas are 100 percent entirely my own and, and you know anyone who says otherwise is just weird they're just weird right <laughs> oh is that what they're they're weird that, that that's so weird that you say that uh, so you've never expressed uh, the idea that t- t- uh, tips shouldn't be taxed before. Where did you get this idea? Listen, you know, I, I was sitting in this restaurant one day, and, and I'm thinking to myself, Kamala, we shouldn't be taxing those tips, should we? Right? Of course not. And there was the idea, just just like that. <laughs> just like that, just out of the blue. Just uh, like that. Okay, so I am going to be, I know you can't stick around for, for more of the show, but I'm going to be playing a montage later of people on the street, and you ask them, uh, who do you support Kamala? Name a Kamala Harris accomplishment, and they can't. What would you say if someone stuck a microphone in your face and said, Kamala Harris, what's your greatest accomplishment as vice president? Well, you know, I, I would say to them, listen, this is an exciting time in, in, in the, the history of our country and, and in the world, right? And this is a time where we need to take time and make space for evaluating uh, all of the important issues and, and plans and things that we're going to do and, and see what can be unburdened by what has been, right? And yeah, what is making space? You said making space. What does that even mean? Well, you know, it, it means it, all of the things that it can mean and has meant in the past, and it will mean in the future, all of the same things, but just in a slightly different way, right? <laughs> God, I hate you so bad. <laughs> all right, uh, next question. Uh, you've gotten a lot of grief for your explanation on inflation and some people don't think that was up to par they thought it was a little bit novice and condescending would you like to clarify your thoughts on inflation and and how we're going to get back to normal with these prices right well you know here's the thing you know and i i completely understand why it was confusing for some people Right. Uh, And and I will simplify it even more by saying that, you know, uh, prices go up. Right. Bread costs more. Right. And 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 gas costs more. And so what we need to do is we need to bring those prices down. Right. And and that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. How how are you going to bring prices down, Blonde Kamala? Well, you know, there are a lot of different ways to implement the plans and the ideas and the, and the initiatives that we are going to be implementing in the future, in the, in the very near future. And all of the things that we're going to do are going to um, just benefit. Probably the, make uh, space. American There's going to be some space making in there, whatever that means. There's going to be so much space for, for <laughs> everyone to have space. Shut up. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. Get out of here. Get, turn the chair around and come back to Elsa Kurt, please. I just... uh, well, my friend boy is that painful for all of us right and it's probably painful to to do 
It is. It actually, it, it's painful. It hurts. <laughs> well, it hurts my brain. It hurts my own ears. It's really uh, rough. Blonde Kamala, I have seen other Kamala Harris impersonators, and some of them are pretty good. What, what's the secret? How do you, how do you, if you were to teach the person listening how to do the Kamala voice, what would you tell them? Um, so I feel like the voice is almost the easiest part. Like you have to just, you know, get real nasally and and whiny almost sounding and you have to slow it down and then of course i think the complication comes for people like it's really hard to dumb yourself down so much to say absolutely nothing but yeah that's that is uh, i think that's the key right there nasally voice uh dumb it down as you know when you think you've dumbed it down enough dumb it down more and you've got it Right. And then when you do the laugh, do it about four seconds longer than is comfortable is what I'm noticing. Yes. Yes. Just drag it out. Make it really uncomfortable for everyone listening. And when you feel blood start to trickle out of your own ears, you know you've got it. Well, I, I to be honest, I don't like doing these segments. I realize when I go back and listen to them or watch the video, that, okay, that was funny. I can see why people would like that. But, you Does know, my PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, it's just not enjoyable but because I, I have four kids and they all went through that phase. They're they're old, old enough now that they don't do this where they would say nothing when they were like three or four and you're trying to beat it out of them. And oh, yeah. you can't really get mad at them because they're four and, you know, they can only think so fast and so complex. But this woman's like 60. And so it's super annoying because she has no excuse. And uh, I think it just brings back some of those those parenting nightmares. It does. It does. It gives us all that trauma relived again. <laughs> all right. So uh, do you have anything that um, is, is in your sights after Kamala loses in November and there's not going to be a, as much demand for an impression? Well, you know, listen, I better I better come up with some stuff. Right. I you know, I mean, that's the hope I, I want for this to have to be retired. I want to hang up the, the voice, the wig, the blazer, the pearls. I want to hang them all up and move on to something else that's less painful. But, uh, yeah, I, t- I take requests. So if anybody's got some ideas, I'd be happy to listen to them and see if I can do some different uh, impersonations. I've been I've been doing, uh, you know, a little bit of a um, little bit of Jill and a little bit. But, you know, all these people, if we're lucky, they're going to be gone. So we'll see. All right. Well, listen, you're blonde, so you're halfway on Fox News as it is. So blonde, conservative, yeah. yes. So that maybe that's in your future. Elsa Kurt, how do they find you outside of WBAP? They can find me, Elsa Kurt Official, across all social media. And uh, ElsaKurt.com is the website. And uh, I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Thank you, Elsa Kurt. Coming up next, you're going to hear some of the latest sound, bait, uh, sound bites from the campaign trail over the weekend on The James Show. If you want to jump in the conversation, 800-288-9227. I'm James Parker. It's News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Hey there, welcome to the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. I am your host, James Parker. Now we know the most of the media outlets lean left. We got it. It's not even up for debate, of course. Most of the media is biased. We're biased. We're just biased in the opposite direction. How bad is it, though? Grabian, the new source. Grabian, I don't know if you've heard of them, but I absolutely adore these people. I want uh, whoever the guy who started gravy i want him to live forever because so much show prep this this, these guys are better than me at montages and they may be like one of four people on planet earth that are better than me at montages they put together a compilation of the tim waltz reaction in the media and then after this i'm going to play you the jd vance jd vance reaction in the media now these are both you know your major parties vp guys And I'm not saying you have to like both guys equally or you can't have an opinion either way. But this bad, this is pretty bad. I just cut this down to about a minute and a half. So stick with me here. Midwestern dad, like super clean yeah. cut vibe. This is <laughs> Tim likes, Waltz. right? Tim Waltz. So plain spoken and relatable. As moderate and independent as it comes. Pretty moderate Democrat. I always knew him as a moderate. One of the most uh, moderate. Very moderate record. Moderate. New, so moderate. moderate. I think this is the new moderate. Far from progressive. He's right down the middle. He's not just an old white man. Tim Waltz beats America. 
you know, pox like a regular person. Tim Walz is the opposite of weird. Walz is basically younger Joe Biden. Regular old Joe out there. Walz is a kind of happy warrior. Happy warriors. Happy warriors. He was certainly the happy warrior last night and, and seemed to be the happy warrior last night. A happy warrior. Folksy backstory. Are going to be very happy warriors. There is a new happy warrior. Following the kind of happy warrior mold. Happy warrior. Happy warrior mentality. Wicked sense of humor. Look how happy the pig looks. <laughs> <laughs> good. Optimism, joy. Salt of the earth, Midwestern uncle vibes, the quintessential Midwestern dad. Tim Walz is so funny that if he's good at this, he will release a recipe for a hot dish. All of his time on the ground, you know, fixing F-150s. Upside of a Norman Rockwell painting, right? He's small town America incarnate. Midwest, your uncle, your dad. I have not been this happy in years. He's the guy who is always there to help you, whether it's changing your oil, whether it's fixing a lawnmower or whether it's helping to fix our democracy. It feels so good to have hope. And I'm going to call him the coach from now until election day. Coach, coach. Tim Waltz, the plain spoken fun uncle who will defend the people he loves. Proud, the resilient, the hardworking, uh, patriotic. Ice fishes. He's a hunter. He does uh, butter carving. You know, he he is a rural person. Well, they really stuck the landing on three things. Moderate, you heard the word moderate about 15 times there at the beginning. In the middle, you heard 28 people who have never used the term before all suddenly embrace the term happy warrior. Did you hear that? Have you ever heard anyone refer to Tim Walls as a happy warrior or anyone be referred to as a happy warrior that like that? And then all of a sudden they just spun on the same turn within the last week. They just copy each other. I mean, these are not original thoughts. These are not critical thinkers. Also, the Midwestern dad. Just Midwestern, Midwest, Midwestern values, Midwestern dad. He's the fun uncle. Really? Oh, good, good. He's Finally, you found a, a 60-year-old ma- uh, white guy who's not toxic or privileged or racist or homophobic or evil or the worst thing ever. Or wor- is he worse than a bear? If you ran in, if you ran, were walking in the woods, would you rather run into a bear or Tim Waltz? I bet you he would pass the bear test. Me, though, you, we're pieces of garbage. <laughs> you don't, shouldn't listen to us. No, not like the cool, fun uncle. Now, if, if that just butt cracked slobbering wasn't enough, check out Grabian's montage on how J.D. Vance was approached by the exact same people. The exact same people were in both montages. And J.D. Vance is weird, extreme, and angry. Utter humorlessness, the humorlessness and pompousness. It's hard to believe that J.D. Vance could be any more extreme. It's like a freak show of bros. They have J.D. Vance, dark and ugly, beneath the dignity of most politicians. J.V. Vance. J.D. is at the far extreme. The most extreme. Being one of the most extreme. We need to recognize that the danger. Angry and mean and dark. Cat lady hating sidekick J.D. Vance. This guy is really weird, y'all. Everybody in America knows a J.D. Vance, but we stay away from him because he's Weird. Anger. Weird. Chaos. Hangdog ex-husband. He was able to reach all the way down to a J.D. Vance. Oh, my goodness. He's so weird, y'all. Remember, Tim Waltz. Moderate. Moderate, moderate, moderate. Not extreme. Right down the middle. But J.D. Vance, he's extreme. He's weird. He's far right. He wants people to get married and have a, a family. Is that really controversial these days? Yeah, it kind of is. They make Tim Wall sound like the guy that's just going to, you know, help old lady cross the street. While J.D. Vance is going to go, if he sees an old lady cro- cross the street, he's going to run out there. He's going to kick the cane out from under her. Then he's going to shove her down. And then he's going to run off just laughing his head off into the sunset like a cartoon. You people are be clowning yourself. I have my own existing political bias, but you have never heard me go that hard. Someone's toxic, some privilege, some weird. Give me credit. I want credit right now because I will vote against you, but I don't have to say anything mean about you. I don't have to say, you looks like he pees in the shower or just come up with some ad hominem attack to make it a not likable guy. And this is the exhausting thing about both of my friends on both sides of the aisle. Just because the other guy disagrees with you politically, they don't automatically become a bad person. I used to have this conversation. Mother-in-law, turn off the radio for about four minutes. I used to have this conversation with my mother-in-law. Look, I know you don't like Obama, but he's not the devil. I know Tim Walls. I keep saying it wrong. He's not the devil. You don't need to argue against him. 
Because he's going to be out of there, and then some other quasi-socialist is going to be in his place, and you're going to be having the same battles. You will have made no ground. Can we all just stop this stuff that everybody on the other side of the aisle is evil? And I know it it goes one direction more so than the other direction, but both sides need to do a little bit of introspection here. Because look, from the third-party people like myself, you guys are so much alike. You guys look like squabbling siblings to me. You both want, the, you, neither one of you care about the dead or the deficit or the Department of Education or want to do anything I want to do. How many of y'all want to wind down Social Security? Oh, that's right. None. So you guys, I know you say you hate each other so much, but you're so alike. There's no way you can hate each other that much. And that's kind of the fr- frustrating part about Rachel Maddow. It, if, if I was on the, the national stage, she would probably say similar things about me. She would probably say similar things about you. You're just weird. You're far right. What are they saying about J.D. Vance? Like he farts in elevators and stuff? What was all that? This is, how they, Vance this is how they were talking about you. Weird, extreme, and angry. Oh, there it is. Weird, extreme, and angry. That's right at the beginning. I was looking for. Rachel Maddow would say I, I, that you are weird and extreme and angry. She would say I am weird and extreme and angry. But if me and Rachel Maddow went and sat down at a bar and watched some football together, you know she likes football. Look at her. You know we would get along. You know she wouldn't say that to my face. You know we'd probably be bestest friends. Oh, you're in broadcasting? Do you know so-and-so that used to work at CNN? Oh, yeah, I know him. I used to work with him or whatever. We would be friends. They're just putting on a show so disinterested third parties watching this can be trained to not like you, to not trust me, to not vote our way. Man, the things that they do for power, it's gross, isn't it? Don't be that person. I'm not saying you are that person i'm just saying don't be that person and also don't be this person there was a man on the street someone came out and uh hey who you, you support kamala for president cool uh what's your favorite policy and then you think her, she's doing a good job in office uh yeah i think so i uh, really like her I th- great representation i feel like definitely it's amazing to have a woman vice president pretty solid job i really do agree with a lot of the policies she's been putting out and i think she's a great vice president what policies specifically do you agree with? <laughs> Can you tell me some? I, maybe I don't know what her policies are. Can you name any specific accomplishments that you're super proud of? Off the top of my head, I can't think of many of them i can't really to be totally honest what i really like is that she does kind of give the nation a positive face being the first woman president um no not any specific ones particularly no (laughs) so what do you like about her uh just just i think she's uh, doing a good job what specifically do you like about her Uh, that's why the media does it because it works. There's a bunch of people out there who have no idea what they're voting for, what their policies are. They don't know what kind of economists they are, what kind of economic policies they're looking for. They don't know, but they've already been trained. Look at how easily they accept their training. Look at how easily they regurgitate the training of their masters. That's why they do it because it works. And all of these people get to vote. Coming up next, we're going to play Dead or Alive for a couple of tickets to see Sammy Hagar with special guest Loverboy. They're coming to the Dos Equis Pavilion in a couple of weeks. But you have a chance to win tickets coming up in about six minutes on The James Show with Dead or Alive. I'm James Parker. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Hey there. Welcome to The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Well, so what sound bites were making the rounds over the weekend? I hope you put down your phone a little bit over Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. And you're going to be hearing some of this for the first time because that means you actually experienced the real world. You got to live in the moment. You were mindful. I spent a lot of time on the phone. I really did, man. I'm so stuck to this thing until November happens because I can't believe all this stuff is free. Think of how much entertainment that you have had from Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or whatever mix of the things that you're on on YouTube. It's all free. That is unbelievable. You can see Elon Musk dunk, the richest man in the world, dunk on the president of the United States or the vice president of the United States or the owner of the Mavericks. You can sit there and watch them have a conversation and throw darts at each other. And it's all free. It's incredible. The one that was passed around the most, though, I I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, Kamala has taken on Trump's position, no tax on tips. Because when I get to office, we are going to not charge taxes on tips, people making tips. Eliminate tax 
taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. Oh, hospitality workers. <clears throat> I know. You know what she means. That's, that's not a big deal that she mispronounced it. Whoopty. But let's talk about that. Right now, it's election season, so it's giveaway season. Either I'm going to take some other money from people and give it to you, or instead of taking money from you, I'm just going to take a little bit less of your money in the first place. So it's, it's a giveaway. I'm going to pay for your student loans. We're going to give you free health care. We're going to come up with cute little choo-choo train to help give you a fun little ride to work. But in giveaway season, you know, there, there, there's actual giveaways and there's taking less. I like how both of them have adopted the less tax stance. Ooh, that's interesting. It's a common observation your entire life that many people say that they are socially liberal, but fiscally conservative. A lot of people that vote Democrat will say that. Everyone says, oh, I wish we could balance the budget. No one really cares about it, but not taxing tips. I've always found the tax on tips to be uh, a negative to begin with, uh, but for the same reasons, any tax on income is a negative to begin with. Like what, what, what's the reason we put so much, uh, so high taxes on cigarettes? Well, we want to discourage people from partaking in cigarettes. So what happens when we put taxes on income? Oh, we want to discourage people from being productive. All right. So that's not good, but you know, you do have to fund the government. How are you going to do it? This is one way to do it. Is that what the founding fathers needed or is that what they wanted or is that what they recommended? All right, so can we be really careful about this? Uh, the, the part that's really popular on taxing tips is there's an assumption made, and rightfully so, that uh, you're only given, given a tax breaks to the lowest of the low among us. The people that live off of tips, none, they're not CEOs. It's not Jeff Bezos. It's not any of the Dallas Mavericks. It's not the guys who are in the C-suite at one of the Fortune 500 companies in one of these downtown buildings. They don't make tips. You're not going to cut their taxes. You're going to cut taxes on who? Your waiter, your waitress, your valet. I mean, who's, who's really going to get the tax break here? So that's why it's so popular. Plus, here's another little secret of the pros. There's not a whole lot of tips to tax to begin with. I don't know what, what varying degree of legal this is, but I remember back in the day, years and years ago, when your humble host here was waiting tables. I may not have claimed every cent of my income in every pay period. I was, oh, no, no, it's a shock. Oh, my God. You're cheating the system. Got away with it, too, suckers. No, nah, that's the normal course of things. You don't claim all your tips to begin with. In some places where you do have to claim or they have to do tip sharing or the, it's all on credit cards, that kind of screws you over. But, the, I mean, think about it like this. The pool of money from tips is so small to begin with. That's why they like to raise taxes on rich people. And I don't, and not the for real rich people, just people that make over $100,000 or $200,000 in a, in a household. Which, you know, for some people that sounds like Richie Rich fantasy land, but that is like a police captain and a, the assistant principal at a big high school. You want to raise taxes on them? I am against income taxes to begin with, period, point blank, end of story. So how? just let that bias feed into the rest of my uh, analysis here. But what about you? Do you think there should be no tax on tips? I would like to hear you if you do think there should be tax on tips. I want Because both candidates say they don't want it. Is there anybody... And this is this is an impossible question. I actually ex expect zero people to call. Zero people are going to call on this. Who wants taxes on tips? Call in 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. There's not one. That's what makes it such a tired talking point. Just an obvious election year giveaway. Kamala, if you didn't want taxes on tips, why didn't you do something when you were vice president? Why didn't you mention it for the last four years? Trump, you were already president for four years. I don't remember you mentioning this before. Maybe you did, but I, I don't remember. I don't remember it being a big deal. Are you acting on it or leaning on someone to propose a bill or asking for it? Or y'all both just kind of came up with the same giveaway at the same time. Again, I, I I like the policy. I'm just really suspicious of both of you. You've both been in positions of power before. You've both been in the White House for four years. Now all of a sudden you just discovered this, dude. If you cut the tax on tips, yeah, it'll it'll make some people's lives a little bit better. And that's good. Whatever kind of small thing helps. But you would not be shocked at how little it'll affect the, uh, the revenue coming in. The other big thing that was going around over the weekend, I, I can connect back to the uh, election that's going on because uh, UK passed a hate speech law. And this was one of their MPs like describing it. 
a couple of weeks ago, I saw this, and I didn't even think it was real, or they're not really going to act on it, but, but are they really going to put the, people in jail? The offense of incitement to racial hatred involves uh, publishing or distributing material uh, which is uh, insulting uh, or abusive, which is intended to or likely to start racial hatred. All right, so that sounded like it was garbage. And then there's people posting themselves getting arrested for Facebook posts over the weekend in the UK. And it sounds, they're so polite when they get arrested. The police so are so nice. Arrested. You're going to be arrested, okay? All right. take and that to the police station. All and right. You, okay? This is in relation to some comments that you've made on a Facebook page. Isn't that almost sweet? You're going to be arrested. Heck yeah. That sounds fun. Where are we going? Oh, we're going to the station. But no, I, and some people are already making the connects uh, back to... Tim Waltz, because Waltz has said previously uh, the same thing that that MP was saying. You don't have a right to hate speech. So is this where we're headed in America? Is this what Waltz? I think do? we need to push back on this. There, there's no guarantee to free speech on misinformation or or hate speech, and especially around our democracy. So on one hand, it just doesn't seem real that police can show up at your door and arrest you for an offensive Facebook comment. But here we are. It happened in the UK, and you have the guy who's the VP pick for the Democrat Party. He's on board. It sounds like he's on, at least in the same ballpark, same ideology. I don't know if he would sign off on that exact same bill. But wow, how, again, it's like the who, who's really for tax on tips? Who's really against free speech? Well, someone is, because they don't have it in the UK anymore. 800 288 9227. I'll get to your calls next. And also, uh, an update uh, the Trump campaign was hacked over the weekend. What does that mean? Details coming up on the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 933. Oh, we got a good couple segments coming up. Both of you ladies that are on hold. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You hang on. I'm going to go to you as soon as we get done with our next guest because I got to figure out what does this mean? I saw the headline that Donald Trump's campaign has been hacked. So before I even try and fumble through and figure it out for myself, uh, let's have Matt Malone back on the James show. He's a cybersecurity expert. What, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Donald Trump's campaign got hacked this weekend, Matt? So it looked like what happened was um, Iran had, and it's not fully confirmed yet. They're still, you know, probably working through that system. So they're not openly explaining it. But there was a report that came out from Microsoft that showed that a Iranian actor had sent a spear phishing campaign to a presidential candidate. Uh, we're now assuming that it's Donald Trump's campaign and uh, was able to get into an email account, pull out some information and then leak that to the media. See, this is you could avoid so much of this. You know, the the uh, the bad attention from uh, actors over overseas. If you could just let your son be a conduit for bribes, you know, then you wouldn't have to worry about getting hacked by Russia or Ukraine or China or silly things like that. Uh, what, what's Iran's deal against Trump? Why don't they want him to get reelected? Well, that I, I don't know. That's more on the political side. I, I don't really know. But on the on the technical side, I mean, they're definitely going after it from China to Russia to uh, uh, Iran. I mean, they seem to be stepping up their game uh, either through spear phishing attacks or just literally going out and hacking and trying to steal data. What do you mean by spear phishing? Explain that one, Matt. So spear phishing is where what they do is they so we've all seen uh, phishing attacks where it's just basically they send out a blanketed email with spear phishing. They're using specific information for a specific person. So, uh, for instance, in this particular case, they actually hacked into an email of a uh, former person who worked there and then sent an email from, like, let's say, a Gmail address saying, hey, you know, I want you to check out this link. Could you please click on it? It comes from somebody, you know, so therefore you think this is probably safe. Um, they're just doing it's it's a much more intensive phishing campaign to where they are very specific and targeting exact people. Is this something that has just ramped up in a, uh, the last couple of months? Because the other Iranian Trump related news was there was supposedly a foiled assassination plot in the works. Yeah. So what we've seen in the past is, you know, Russia has been doing this for quite a while. Right. We, we saw it in. Uh, they've done it in presidential campaigns, but also just in, in the general uh, cybersecurity world. Russia has been a big foe. All of a sudden, Iran is kind of stepping up their game and kind of getting into this. So it seems like they're definitely targeting <laughs> the Trump campaign and uh, going after it with full vengeance. So it'll be interesting to see you know, how this kind of plays out, because I don't think they're doing this very early. And, you know, they've done it in previous uh, campaigns. They've done it later in the game. Now they're doing it early. So I think they're, we're going to see more and more of this. What are they hoping to accomplish by hacking his campaign? 
So they're doing what's called a, a hack and leak. So uh, we in, in cyber, we have, you know, threat actors and we have motivations, right? Some of them are ideological. Some of them are, you know, money motivated. These seem to be definitely politically motivated. So they're, they seem to be hacking into information, grabbing that information, then trying to leak it out. And those threat actors can be dangerous because they're not trying to, you know, get money. And there's there's no reason that they're not going to once they achieve their goal, their goal is just to create chaos. What are they going to leak? Like, hey, Trump wants to get rid of ta- taxes on tips. Well, I, I think what they were doing was something on J.D. Vance. They were, uh, I guess, the the information on J.D. Vance. So I'm not even mm-hmm. sure they haven't made it public what it was, but. Um, I don't I don't think any of the news outlets that actually ran with it. Well, thanks for explaining it to us. Matt Malone, Vistrada. How do they find you outside of the James show? Uh, Vistrada dot com. It's that easy. Thank you very much, Matt Malone. All right. Sticking with the phones. Kim in Dallas. Now that we got the update on the hack over the weekend, let's get back to the brass tax. Should we have taxes on tips? Absolutely. Explain yourself, Kim. It's income. We have an income tax in this country, and people need to pay taxes on their income, whether it's a tip or not. And I don't understand why this group of people have been singled out for special treatment. It seems completely arbitrary. It's a cheap way to buy votes. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just pandering. And there's no reason for wait staff to be getting special treatment when the rest of America is not. And frankly, there are a lot of wait staff at these fine restaurants, five star, Michelin, whatever, that are making high incomes. So are they gonna get to skate and not pay taxes on their tips? Look, I don't need it's, it. It's I, just ridiculous. I don't need it at the tire shop. But you can make a philosophical case that instead of me giving the bartender a tip at the end of the night, I'm giving them a $20 gift. Now, I'm allowed to give gifts to whomever I like up to a certain cap before there's any tax implications. Why not just say, I'm not tipping this person. I'm giving them a gift. That, that's just silly. No. They're getting that's you're paying them that because they have provided a service pursuant to their employment and they it's their wages and they need to pay taxes on the like the rest of America. What about this? Uh, could I soften your heart if we just said let's get rid of the income tax period? Uh, well, we need some income tax just to fund you know the basics in our society. But I do support a very flat income tax, but everybody should pay it. You know, like five or ten percent, but everybody pays it. All right. You defended your point well. Thank you very much, Kim in Dallas. Let's go to the other side. And in Little Elm, should we have taxes on tips? I have a slightly different opinion on this. No, we shouldn't have taxes on tips, but I want to make sure that they continue to do Medicare and uh, Social Security because well, that's still taxes. We are paid on the lower end and can't. That's don't have insurance or whatever. Okay, but that's still taxes. Well, see, I want to break that apart and say no income tax, no but income, okay. no income tax. But I think Social Security. I have I've worked in the hospitality and restaurant industry for years, and I've had older individuals that are just trying to make it a few extra bucks because Social Security isn't making it far enough. But if they don't have that Social Security put in then they're going to get less when they get older. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because it's I see what you're based saying. on your income, and therefore you may be sitting at a lower income ultimately when you get older. I, I, I get you. I get you. All right. Well, well done. And in Little Elm, uh, you defended your point well. What do you think? Should there be taxes on tips? 800-288-9227. Yes, I'm not going to... Uh, give Eric Bushman a tip for doing a good news newscast. I'm going to give him a gift of a, a couple of beers after work. That it's just a it's not a tip. You can't tax him on it. 800-288-9227. I'm James Parker. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Is this bumper music or is there a news alert I don't know about? I feel like maybe there's a big crash on the high five. 635 eastbound right before you get to the tollway. Two left lane, something or other. No, for real, it's the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. And what has turned into the, the, the forefront issue for all of a sudden on the election, both sides are saying we shouldn't be taxing tips. There should be no taxes on tips. Now, skeptical, cynical, negative, pessimist old man James says this is just a blatant 
election year giveaway we're three months from an election and you just want waiters and valets and all these other people to go vote for you i get it you, you didn't say anything for the last three years or the last seven years now all of a sudden the timing's too convenient but philosophically speaking well, I'm, I'm against taxes on tips i'm against taxes on all income why just be so stingy and keep it to tips if it's bad for people who get income on tips wouldn't it be bad for all income diane this is Diane in Dallas. You're next up on WBAP. What do you think, Diane? Well, I don't think the lady that called a couple calls beforehand realizes I've been in the service business for over 40 years. I've been a server and a bartender. You only are getting paid $2.35 an hour. And if your tip is put, the gratuity is put on your paycheck, it is taxed at 32%. And it's been doing that for almost 40 years. I've been bartending for 46 years. Well, yeah, but to be fair, that's just your withholdings, and you get a lot of that back when you file. You're not taxed not really. at 32%. I've had to pay. Yeah. Well, I know you've had to pay, but you didn't pay 32%, lady. I don't pay 32%. Not on my cash, but I did on my, when my gratuity is on my paycheck, it is taxed at 32%. What about, what do you think, uh, so no income tax on tips? No, I'm fine with that. They, oh, okay. You know, the 32%. Oh, you were just correcting tax, the previous they, caller. Correct. Okay. Yes. But if they make a little cash on the side, some people are even just doing that for, you know, to trying to make ends meet on top of their full-time job like I am. And I'm a single woman over 60. Are you still a bartender? Single woman over 60? Yes, I am. Where are you at? Yep. I'm at the uh, Cowboy Stadium. No way! Yes way. Been oh, there man. with the Cowboys almost 29 years. That just got really cool really quick. I a friend of mine who's a lawyer, like he's a partner in a law firm works concessions just because he wants to be in the in the building that's all all right it is an awesome stadium <laughs> i, I want to hear some of your stories sometime not now because we're talking no economics but call back when we're having some kind of fluffy time or find me on facebook and, and let me know what some of your stories are i sure will thank you thank you because my buddy will has crazy stories that is a whole scene man that that whole crew that works stadiums uh this is alan in corsicana you're next on the uh, next up on the james show on wbap should we have taxes on tips Oh, uh, James, it, 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 that could go either direction. I, I mean, that's, that's what I told your screener. They're, they're taxed. Girlfriend waits tables in the evenings on weekends, and they're taxed on what's put on on the card, but they're not taxed on cash that's left on the table. Well, you can be taxed and, on it if you're so honest well, that you claim it. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's what I, and and, and there, there's really no way to police that. No, there's not. That's exactly right. The, 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 the prior lady kind of stole some of my thunder, but she is correct. You know, they, they make $2.32 an hour. And so basically their income is, is what they make on tips. Well, I like this as an intro into the, the idea that maybe we should just get rid of income taxes, period. And- I'm, I'm, I'm all in. But the, the other lady said that, the, the flat tax. I'm, I'm in on that. that it, 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 everybody would pay it. Well, okay, but flat tax and no tax aren't the same thing. Which one are you for? Well, I definitely in on the no tax. But oh, okay. Like the other lady said, you know, we got to, the country's got to survive. I mean, you got to have a highway to drive on. Okay, one well, the gas taxes take care of that. Oh, uh, I guess. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, we don't. We, we don't need. Any, and if we can run a two trillion dollar deficit, what's the income taxes for here? All of a sudden, Alan. Well, obviously, it's padding folks' pockets. <laughs> right. Look, income taxes are, are about 40% of federal revenue. And then you got to start breaking it down for all the, 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 the taxes we pay. Would they really miss our income tax? Because, you know, when you start, we start yeah, you start lopping in the Social Security tax, uh, the, the sales taxes, the property taxes, you know, corporate taxes still exist. You know, it's, it's really not that big of a chunk. And, Absolutely. You, you, you're, you're correct. We need, I, okay. just, just like the old saying is, you can learn to live on what you make. Yeah, and, and let's uh, let's go back uh, and balance the damn budget. And whatever you bring in, that's what you're going to have to live on. Sounds too crazy. Absolutely. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's Alan in Corsicana on The James Show. If you want to be next, 800-288-9227. 800 288 
9227. Coming up, we're going to check in with Victoria Churchill from the New York Post and see what's going on with the, the swing state. She's on the swing state team for the New York Post. And there have been some movements in the polls. We'll see if the Tim Walls effect is having much of a bump and sticking around. And also, uh, I want to remind you that you, you need to check out the James Show podcast. The statistics are a little bit better, but uh, I need them le- even better than that. Wherever you're already listening to podcasts, look for the James Show. If you're not already listening to podcasts, next time you're, you know, on the throne in your alone time and you need to kill a few minutes, look it up. Also, I have like little chunks and highlights and video clips so you can judge me based on my appearance on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Rumble, all kinds of good stuff. So look for that. James Show, James Parker, WBAP. Just search for that. I'll pop up all over the place. If you want to get in on the conversation, it's 800-288-9227. I'm James Parker. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Hey there, all you beautiful Texans. Welcome back to the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Let's go. Listen, feel free to just butt in the conversation at any time. 800-288-9227. Don't wait for me to like specifically ask a question. If you just have a contribution, just pretend like we're sitting next to you at the bar and you're like, hey, 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 hey. No, no, no. Hooterville was between Green Acres and Petticoat Junction. You know, just whatever it is. Feel free to jump in. 800 288 Nine two two seven. My next guest is with the New York Post Swing State team, Victoria Churchill, back on the James Show. Victoria, first thing I want to ask you about is: Is there a waltz bump? Victor- I think there is definitely a little bit of an enthusiasm bump on the Democrat side, but I believe I even might have mentioned this last time I was on your show. You know, this is something that the Trump campaign predicted, and this is really no shock seeing what we're seeing from the mainstream media today. Uh, You know, first of all, they were excited when Joe Biden got out of the race. They were excited when Kamala announced her running mate. And now they've got the DNC next week. And so really the media has had every opportunity to focus on Kamala and Walls. And so with them doing that, there's really no shock to see that there is a slight bump in polling and a bump in enthusiasm for the Democrats right now. So I see the confirmed speakers are President Joe Biden, Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, uh, and I'm assuming Kamala, but she's not listed yet. We're expecting her to speak, right? I believe so, yeah. I mean, you know, this is when she would formally secure the nomination in person. Obviously, that was done by a virtual roll call a couple of weeks ago uh, to make the filing deadline for a couple of states to have her name on the ballot. But, you know, this would be the in-person appearance for the ticket in front of all the DNC delegates that are going to be there in Chicago next week. Have we uh, had any confirmation on the debates? Because one of them in the in the trump lineup was fox and i don't remember kamala ever agreeing to that did we get any movement on that nothing on fox yet we are looking at that abc debate in early september but that is the only one i believe as of now that has been uh agreed to with both parties so kamala harris is getting some criticism for not speaking to the media and taking questions uh does she have a press conference lined up did we ever get one of these availabilities scheduled Well, she is making herself available to media to an extent in her swing state swing that she is making ahead of the campaigns. But, you know, this is something in the New York Post that uh, a colleague of mine we covered last week that the day that uh, Harris picks Walls as her running mate, this is actually a hit that uh, J.D. Vance directed towards Harris is that, you know, she needs to make herself more open to the media And, you know, if I'm a Harris strategist at this point, I'm telling her that she can't go off script because that's when we would be getting nervous. So uh, what are we expecting to happen next here on uh, the, the debate stage or I'm sorry, on the election stage? Well, again, as I mentioned, obviously next week, the Democrats do have the DNC, the Democrat National Convention taking place in Chicago. So that will uh, definitely be getting quite a bit of coverage from the mainstream media. And then on the flip side, we've got Vance and Trump hitting the campaign trail quite extensively. Trump this week, I know he's going to be back in North Carolina. He's going to be in Asheville. Uh, Vance is going to be making a stop in Pennsylvania over on the western side of the state, New Kensington. That's actually where... Uh, one of the almost victims from the Butler rally was from. So that's, you know, just between uh, Butler and, um, excuse me, Pittsburgh, uh, right there over in western Pennsylvania. 
Uh, but again, you know, we're looking at these campaigns to be crisscrossing the country, particularly in the swing states. And we're looking at the crowds that they're drawing out. You know, Kamala Harris has had an uptick in crowds. You know, I was there in, in uh, Philadelphia last week when she announced her running mate walls. And there was definitely quite a few lines up and down the block. And, you know, I talked to voters uh, that, you know, seemed excited that, Frankly, I think it wasn't Joe Biden uh, that was going to be on the top of the ticket. But it was also interesting hearing from some of those voters. A few of them were actually relieved that Josh Shapiro was not going to be the running mate. That's shocking Um, in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. I really heard that from a couple of them. Uh, You know, one line that I heard directly, which was a little bit of a shock, was that uh, one voter told me that they were happy that it wasn't a quote unquote Zionist that was going to be on the ticket with oh. so that was really interesting hearing that directly from a voter's you know, voter's mouth of why they were supporting this new ticket. Well I appreciate the honesty, random voter. Uh, the other thing I was uh I was gonna ask you about is from the back end. You know, you're writing and you're putting up content on the New York Post. What topics are getting the most traffic? Well, I think not just on our site, but really across the Internet this week, uh, Tim Walz's military record, that was definitely a big one. Um, you know, embellished is, is a term that a number of people have used. I uh, kind of asked that about um, Hung Kao, our Virginia Senate candidate here, the Republican. I asked him what he thought about it, Tim Walz's reportedly embellished military record, and he told me, you know, embellished isn't even the right term. He said that Walls blatantly lied about his military service. And so that's definitely an ongoing conversation that we're seeing in the media, uh, particularly, you know, conservatives hitting him on it. Um, But, you know, even outside of actual publications on Twitter, there was a number of uh, elected officials, particularly in Congress, saying, you know, this is me not being Tim Walls. So actually going on a deployment and not, uh, you know, kind of leaving the line of duty, leaving in Tim Walz's case, it was a National Guard deployment that he retired ahead of. Uh, and, you know, all these service members saying, well, I actually went on my deployments. And so here's me and here's what Tim Walz didn't do. Where do they find your work outside of the James Show, Victoria? Uh, find me on the New York Post. Find me on social media. Keep up with all of my travels through the swing states. Virginia, Pennsylvania, North Carolina is primarily where I am covering uh, over the next few months. There she is, Victoria Churchill, New York Post Swing State Project. Thanks for being on the James Show yet again. You got any comments on what was just discussed? 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. We'll get back to the sound bites from the campaign trail next on the James Show. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3.